nature is quite remarkable. Oh, it feels so good. So Hunter, uh, you know, a lot of intense emotions on the in the film, uh, very high energy, especially the second half. Um, how would you describe the making of um, the experience of making Cuckoo? Yeah, um, obviously Gretchen is in a lot of turmoil uh, for most of the movie. I had a blast. It was my first movie I ever filmed and um, and it was like summer camp and um and like we really became like a family i loved uh you know one of the hard things but also the cool things about being a lead and and you know learning about what being a lead is for for this project is is getting to be there every day for like almost everything and uh and you know kind of uh yeah, being on that same ride that like the crew was on, and um, uh, I really loved the camaraderie of it. Yeah. Um, Dan, your character is uh, something else, and uh, I think um, the movie smartly doesn't explain every detail about him and his backstory. But I wonder if you and Tillman spoke about you know the backgrounds and the specifics of uh, you know what's really going on with this guy and, and what he's doing there. Yeah, I mean, we didn't get, didn't get too specific, but the, we talked a lot about this sort of this preservation project that he is a part of, that he this, this sort of legacy that he's continuing, and and um, and just you know the sort of the scientific aspect of of this guy who you know believes that he's doing good work for the for the preservation of this uh, of this creature, and and. Um, yeah, he he thinks it's uh, he thinks it's a beautiful thing, and you know doesn't doesn't seem to see anything wrong with what's happening here, um, which is a great thing to have kind of going counter to what Gretchen is experiencing of of this whole situation, and so you've got you know these very very different angles on on this situation, really. Um, you know, Jessica, you know this is not an easy movie to describe. I don't know how you would do it if, if you were asking your, your friends were asking what what the movie you're in is like or, or about, uh, even when I, you know it's about. <laughs> I would say it's batshit crazy. Um, <laughs> it kind of defies description, and that's the beauty of the film. Like it has so many genres that uh, that are woven into each other. It has so many different themes. Um, but I would say it's it's an original film, which is incredibly rare these days and should be supported. Is that what drew you to it? Uh, because it, it defies easy description. Yeah, he's. I mean, yeah. To, I think we as as an audience are very knowledgeable now in terms of the kind of hero's journey, the save the cat beat sheet. We all know it. I'm sure you, you're watching films and you go, and he's going to betray her, and she's going to die. Um, at least I am. But Tillman doesn't follow any rules, and so it makes his work feel really fresh and new and, uh, yeah, unpredictable. And, and that's very hard to come by. And, you know, good on Neon and the team for supporting him. And, uh, he could Hunter, can you talk magic. a little bit about the the physicality of your role, especially in the second half where she's kind of squaring off against these the villain or the villains, if you will? Um, what was that like? And what was it like uh, opposite the actress who plays our mysterious uh, antagonist? Yeah, uh, yeah, Caitlin did such an incredible job uh, with the hooded woman. I love that uh, they brought in dancers to. Um, to bring those, you know, characters to life uh, because it is so physical, um, and uh, yeah, and then it, I mean, yeah, it's it's it at that point it was the most physical like acting I had ever done. Either I hadn't really gotten into action or anything yet, and I had so much so much fun with it. Um, uh, it's it's like it's it really like itches the scratch that um 
like I had when I was a kid and you're playing pretend and you know running around with sticks pretending it's a sword or something it uh it really um yeah I had a blast great well thank you guys so much and uh, congrats on the film Thanks. so I mean first thing that interests me is that you know you shot on 35 millimeter Mm -hmm. um, which of course has a great distinct look, but also, you know, not as easy to pull off as digital, uh, just from a technical standpoint. Um, yeah. what was, uh, what led to that decision and what were some of the challenges you faced? Exactly that, that it's not easy to pull off. It's very important. I think it's, it's just important that art is hard, you know, mm -hmm. I, I, I truly believe that, uh, it shouldn't be easy. It should, you should be very well prepared and, and, and things maybe also need to go wrong every now and then right and then you have to live with it and then you have to do better the next time and i think that's all really important uh, when 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 you get too comfortable when you have too much power over everything um it becomes a little dull i think and i think um you know and I've, i I, feel, I see that sometimes and i don't think um i i mean i personally i cannot put obstacles in my way like, because you could think like Oh, just limit yourself to three takes, as if you weren't, if, as if you were shooting on film. But you, you won't do that. Like when you go, when 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 it's shooting time, you do everything in your power to tell the story, you know, because you never have enough time, you never have enough money, and stuff like that. So um, I think you have to. I, I mean, I personally have to do that. But with it comes a beautiful, um, you know let's call it a look let's call it a vibe maybe right i think there is a special quality to it to to how it interacts with the light the, the chemic uh, chemicals of a film strip um and also i think one of the most important thing is that um you don't have a big screen on set where you can sort of see you basically can see your finished image, right? You can color correct, you can give it all the looks, everything you want, and you can be on set and be like, no, I think we need a little bit more haze here, or let's you know, do the contrast or whatever. I don't think that's good. I think what's really good is if there's a human on set with a human eye, you know, measuring the light and it's like, hmm, I think maybe, hopefully, our camera will be able to see that far in the dark, you know? And then you get, so sort of the, the 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 movie gets funneled through a human, and that gives you this human feel, and I love that. Um, the film has a very kind of complicated mythology, and you know, you obviously don't give us any easy answers. I'm I'm curious how long you've been thinking about this story, and and do you sort of know all the mysteries that aren't necessarily explained to us? Yeah, I think I do know all the mysteries. I don't think it's very important and it's very hard to talk about them what may be lying in the and you know in, in, the, in, the, in the in the background uh, what you don't get from or the answers that you don't get um that you don't get from watching the movie quite frankly um but i've i i have my own mythology that i sort of built over the years working on this uh, or even in the first months when i wrote the first draft um um Maybe, maybe a little hint. I was thinking about the ways of the Neanderthal a lot, you know, which used to be a different species of human, so to speak. And who knows <laughs> where cool. they went? Yeah. Well, it's fun just thinking about it, even if you don't know yeah. exactly what's going yeah. on. That's yeah. the beauty of film. Um, thank you so much, Tillman, for your time. I really appreciate it. Have a great day. Thank you so much. Thank Take you. care.